One of the most useful items that I have bought in recent years is without question the Grabo. This single tool has made dealing with sheet goods far more bearable to the point that I no longer dread the process of manipulating 4x8 sheets of material. What it is essentially is a vacuum clamping system that is portable and easy to use. All you have to do is simply put it on the material, activate the suction, and lift the object. It's that easy. The biggest difference that I have found between this and something like the Gorilla Gripper is that I'm not only limited to picking it up from the top. I can use this to get low on the material, making it far easier to lift pieces safely. If you frequently install Bloom Undermount Drawer Slides, then I recommend looking at the Rockler Bloom Undermount Drawer Slide Jig. The kit comes with the jig, as well as all of the bits that are needed to use with this jig. This makes the installation of these slides quick, easy, accurate, and repeatable. It will not only help you speed up the clip installation, but also drilling out the locator pin for the slides on the back of the drawer boxes, as there is no need for layout with this jig. Another helpful jig from Rockler are these hinge plate jigs, and they are sold in various configurations for different situations, and they're incredibly easy to use. And the way that they break them down is with different template names. And on their website, they have a category for each hinge, and each hinge is assigned a template. You simply use the hairline cursor to align with the mark of where you want your plate to go, then use a self-centering drill bit to drill out your holes. These jigs are very accurate and easy to use. In my last video, I walked through my typical cabinet assembly. In it, I explained how I use a narrow crown stapler as part of the process. While you absolutely could get away with a brad nailer, I find the stapler to provide more holding power and it allows me to get the whole box assembled prior to adding any screws. The benefit I find doing it this way is that for me, it eliminates the need to use clamps during assembly. The brand that I prefer over all others that I have used over the years is Grex. I have four different Grex guns over multiple years and still have never had a misfire or failure. A track saw is an invaluable tool for many reasons, but it is great to have when it comes to cabinetry. Ripping full sheets of plywood can be a challenge depending on various factors such as type of table saw, space, and weight of the material. A track saw allows you to break down larger pieces into more manageable pieces. But it doesn't stop there. You could cut everything exactly the size you want it and never use the table saw at all. Unless you have the luxury of owning a huge sliding table saw, a track saw is a must in every shop. I personally recommend Festool for track saws. With the track saw comes a couple of useful accessories, these being a good track square and a good set of parallel guides. These will give you accuracy and repeatability, which is a must on any cabinet project. I believe the best options for both of these accessories come from TSO products. And if you want to see how these stack up against a lot of the other competitors, I'll leave a link to some videos that I did on them below. If you are not using a router system to bore your hinge cup locations, then I would strongly suggest investing in a good quality 35 millimeter Forstner bit. I have tried various styles of bits and they are not all created equal. Many that I have used tend to overheat and dull very quickly. For longevity and cut quality, I really like the Famag 35 millimeter bit. I also like using this bit for the much smaller shavings that it produces, which is very different from other Forstner bits. It also allows for superior dust collection if you're using it for this purpose. Handling long pieces of material can be challenging at the table saw. The Jessam Clear Cut Table Saw Stock Guides are phenomenal for this. They basically act as a third set of hands on long rip cuts. They apply downward pressure while drawing the piece into the fence. This ensures that your cut remains parallel throughout. Most importantly, they have significant safety benefits as well, as they almost completely eliminate the threat of a kickback on your table saw. For those of you applying edge banding by hand, I would encourage you to look at the fast cap dual sided edge banding trimmer. They can be very effective and speed up your trimming considerably as it does cut both the top and bottom at the same time. FastCap actually has a large variety of tools that can make edge banding faster and easier 
and can be purchased as a complete set for those that are interested. Layout is a common and important part of cabinetry, and there are two layout tools that I use in every cabinet I build. The Polini Rule, specifically the 6-inch, and the Delve Square, which is actually a fairly recent addition to my shop. The ruler is great for setback spacing and other small measurements, which are very common with cabinets. And the Delve Square is fantastic for layout lines for screw locations due to the different incremental steps on the square. A pocket hole machine is a valuable tool for building cabinetry. It is a simple, quick, and repeatable way to assemble boxes of all sizes without having any visible fasteners. I have used both Craig setups, like the Foreman, as well as the Castle 110 pocket hole cutter. Regardless of what you use, pocket holes excel when assembling cabinets and drawer boxes. When it comes to installation of door and drawer hardware, the True Position Jig is a lifesaver. It makes it very fast and repeatable by simply setting the jig to the desired size and pre-drilling all of the doors and drawers at the same time. There are other less expensive copies of this jig available, but I cannot speak to their quality as I have not used them personally. I have been using this for years and I would break it out even if I only had one piece of hardware to install. It takes all the layout marking errors out of the equation and is almost dummy proof. Unless your name is Drew Witt. Spring clamps are a great thing to have on hand. Where I get the most use out of these is when I am adding stretchers to a cabinet such as a bank of drawers. Instead of measuring and marking the layout over and over again, I like to cut spacers, and then I use the spring clamps to hold them in place. They are much smaller and easier to manage than other options and provide all the holding power that I need while securing the stretchers. If you are somebody that does a lot of edge banding or enough that you are sick and tired of ironing it on, then the Festival Contouro should absolutely be on your list. It is by far my favorite tool to use for the simple fact that it does exactly what it's designed to do, and it does it perfectly. While this is a very expensive option, it doesn't take up any space in your shop, and it makes the process far more enjoyable. All you do is use the Contouro to apply the banding, use the cutter to trim the ends, and then use the router to clean it up. I promise the time that this machine will save you will be worth the cost in one large cabinet job. Finally, what I consider to be the holy grail of cabinet construction, and that is the LR32 system from Festool. This is an expensive option, but it's an extremely accurate, all-inclusive option. It consists of the router, which can be the OF1010 or the OF1400, the LR32 kit, and the LR32 rail. This is my go-to system because I bore all of my holes at one time prior to assembly, making the assembly easy and accurate. I also use this system to pre-drill all of my drawer slide locations. This actually makes installing drawer slides a breeze. If you are serious about cabinet construction and you want a simpler way to batch out large jobs, this is definitely worth considering.